Um, okay, I'm going to talk about thrust manuals, and I'm just restarting my computer because I know that sometimes works. Um, thrust manuals is a um, organisation started by Adam Hyde, who's a New Zealander who lives in Berlin at the moment. He's been in, in, he's been in Europe for most of his life, really, most of his adult life. Um, and has anyone heard of it? Um, right, some of you. Uh, the Flux Manuals writes manuals for open source software. You see, that's working. Um, in a collaborative kind of way. Um, Um, and so far, they've written about, they've finished about a, a hundred books and ha have started a few more, and there's been about a thousand authors of those hundred books, um, and they're in about 30 languages, I think. Right, okay, that's working. Um, oh, yeah. So we write documentation for end users, not not for, for people like you. Um, it's not like Doxygen, it's like how to use Firefox, how to use OpenOffice. And a lot of it is about how to use multimedia stuff, um, which is why I'm in this mini comp and not another one. Well, Conrad kind of needed someone to talk, so that's why. Um, um, because Adam, he started off as an artist, making, d doing, doing streaming video, and um, he ended up spending his whole time trying to tell people how it works. And um, so then he went into documentation and he ended up dropping, retiring as an artist. Um, we use a, a JavaScript editor on a kind of wiki platform. And so all the books are actually written directly in HTML, not in anything fancy. Um, and from the HTML, they're published in various formats. So our, our source format is HTML. Um, so it's, it differs from Wikipedia and Wikibooks and things like that in that to get a book started you need to um, you need to ask an admin to start the book and they'll and they'll if it's a valid book, which means you know there is some docu some software or some process that needs documenting, it'll be started. Especially if you're volunteering to write it. If you're not volunteering to write it, then it probably won't be. So, um, and then, before it gets kind of officially blessed and pushed out to people, well, an admin has to do that. So it has, kind of gets checked at either end, which just means um, it's not so good for spamming in if you're trying to sell um, drugs. You, you know, you, you can put it in the book, but it actually won't get out beyond the authors who are, who are using the editable format. It won't get be published out to the world. Um, and you can't... You, um, and similar kind of things like Wikibooks, there's, there's a million books that have been started, or maybe it's a billion, I, I lose count. Um, and I think there's about 12 of them are finished, because everyone just has a slightly different take on any, every topic, and they just start a new book. So this, the Floss Manuals process kind of restricts people to um, to the books that well it limits the number of books which which actually works better for ending up with a better book and um, most a lot of the books are written in book sprints which is like a code sprint it's um, a whole lot of people get together here's an example um, they get together in a room and this one the, 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 they wrote a book called How to Bypass Internet Censorship. Um, the usually, usual evangelical thing to say is it was written in five days, but actually there's work before that and after that. But there were five days where all these people were together. Um, and it was sponsored by someone who, they didn't like the Iranian government. And so 
Um, but didn't, didn't like that the Iranian government was um, blocking, you know, internet access. So we wrote the book in English, and then it got translated to Persian. Um, and they paid for all of that, which is all of that is bringing a whole lot of people together in this room. Um, I'd say this person here, you see, you know, the um, internet censorship people are sort of like secretive and all that. They were so secretive that they even put their something over the head when they're being photographed. Um, well, I'm still using a Mac though. But, um, so, so they came to date together for five days. But most of the, there's actually work, if you look at the, um, the log, there's people were working on this earlier, you know, just sort of touching a whole lot of files, setting up the chapters. And then um, it's going to jump forward to, yeah, suddenly it all starts, I know this is them just setting up the chapters. Suddenly it all starts happening. There's, everyone is writing on the book. And then it sort of slows down, and people are still fixing up little bits of it um, for for weeks after, well, forever, really. It's you know, it's kind of like people change full stops and stuff. Um, it's taking a wee while, so I'll jump it forward. I, just in case you, you haven't paid attention for the last few hours, you can just do this. This is, is how simple it is to make a video. You see, now the box print started. So there, all these people were running together, making the book. And um, that goes on for five days. And then it sort of slows right down. People, you know, touching a file here and there. And that, if the video went on, it would go on till today. But it doesn't. Um, and so to start a book, you just kind of send an email from the list saying it needs doing and saying that you'll do it and it'll, um, it'll get started but then to get, it, to get a book sprint you actually need to um, get someone to come up with money and um, Adam's good at doing that he goes around Google and Mozilla and all those people and they actually pay out money um, ok, getting on to multimedia um, this is a, a, clip, a clipped Snapshot of our um, screenshot of our of the English front page, which kind of shows that a, a lot of the things have got something to do with multimedia. And how much time do I have anyway? I mean, altogether. Um, uh, when when am I meant to end? Oh. Um, okay, that's the English one. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of these manuals. 20, I've got, how, how, how long have I got? Two minutes. Two minutes to. No. Two. two minutes. What is it? Oh, I've got 15 minutes. All right. Um, so, and this is the, the Farsi or Persian front page. There's. there's um, Actually, a lot more books. I mean, this goes way down to that there on the front page of the English one, and, f and fewer of them in Persian. But there's, you know, still quite a few. A lot of them are video ones, and there's altogether there's 30 languages. I don't know how good they are in different languages. Um, and then if you go to the away from the um, published ones, so the front page has ones that are available in PDF and, and book form and EPUB and all kinds of things. And, you know, the official. And that, if you go to the editing side of it, there's a whole lot more that are either obsolete because um, they were written, you know, five years ago, <laughs> or they're not finished, or for some reason they're just not published. And there's a lot of multimedia ones there, too, that some of them could do with work if you didn't have enough to do already. Um, okay, what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you an example of them. So, this, 
is the interface that people use to edit at the moment. And you, you just kind of click on some... Yeah. You see, it's a bad network here. I'll wait for that to load. <coughs> um, that's that other thing. Right, here's an example of a, of a published book. Um, this is actually a Persian one again. And this is kind of shows the form that they have lots of pictures, lots of screenshots, and um, just, you know, words. It's basically, it goes as far as saying, you know, click on the file menu, go to... It goes right through every little last detail just to get... Um, so that no one can miss it. And, and, and the same with the um, command line stuff. And it tells you, it shows you a picture of the command line. Or well, sometimes it's just a you know, pre-tag, but it's pretty much the same. Um, anyway. Yeah. So the, this is the Audacity one, and two. You just edit it in a um, HTML editor kind of thing. And there's this little uh, IRC gateway on the side. Um, so people discuss this on IRC as they do it. But anyway, back to um, what we what we use now is um, Twiki, which is a a very old Perl wiki which has been modified to the point where it's um, not really a wiki anymore because we don't want um, magical linking from one page to another. It's, uh, we want more like a content management system where um, everything is, is kept linear, you know, because it's ending up as a book. Um, and we're using a thing called Report Lab to make the PDFs, which is terrible. It, it won't do right-to-left text, it only do left-to-right. But it does very good, um, it deals with the pages very well. And there's, there's, there's Adam, who some of you know. Um, mm. And now, this is where I come in is Adam pays me money to write new software for. I don't write the books. I, I don't have anything to do with that, really. Um, but, but they pay me money. And the bit I, I work on is this um, Objave, which is a, the, the thing that will turn the HTML into, um, into PDFs and EPUBs and stuff like that. And it works well with right to left text, doesn't it? Um, and this man here, Adso, is working on um, a new wiki, which is like a wiki, but it makes books instead of web pages. And, um, but with, I'm not going to talk about this stuff because it's, it's um, not really the topic. Okay. Um, this, okay, look. The answer to the, the, answer, the question that you're probably going to ask is, is um, um, docbook and any, any real structured markup language is a barrier to people to, um, who want to start writing a book. And so if we used any of those as our, as our main language, then uh, um, the number of participants would drop right down from, you know, from 1,000 to 10. And I, of course, all of them could learn how to use DocBook in three days, but then that leaves two days to write the book, and they're still a little bit confused. Um, and um, there are, you know, there's a hundred or so documentation projects out there that do use um, good markup. And there's only Flux Manuals that uses HTML, and it's terrible like this. But Fast Manuals writes a whole lot more books and has a whole lot more participants because it's worse. And um, 
if you can't stand using HTML, you can go and use the other ones, and it doesn't matter. Um, but it does mean that we um, can't do a whole lot of magical transformations and stuff, because HTML was written by a um, JavaScript editor in the browser, and sometimes it, people write in Word and they cut and paste them. It's just awful. And we use GPO as the license for all, everything, almost everything anyway. And the HTML was the source um, of, for that. Um, here's some links, um, if you care. Um, what do you want to hear more about, if anything? I can show you more examples of the... Oh. Sorry. Uh, you you should. Adam Hyde seems to be the man who's sort of created this. How community like is? I, I, I'll let you know. I've been lurking on the mailing list for, yeah. for a few months now, just sort of wondering how best to be able to, to uh, contribute some skills to this kind of thing. But I'm just I'm a bit curious about the community. How because everything's based around sprints which are obviously face to face yeah. and Adam Hyde seems to be sort of the linchpin for the entire community. How how community how much real collaboration is there? Um, yeah it's a good question. Um, uh, I don't quite know. because um, I don't really write the books. I, um, There are some things that happen without Adam. Like there's, he's got a few lieutenants or lieutenants, depending where you come from. Um, like Anne Gentle has run some book sprints. She's in Texas, I think. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't carry on without Adam sort of pushing. It. He, he's. Um, and it slowed down a bit because he, he fell in love. You see, it kind of ruined it all. Um, you know, it was his, his driving passion, and now, now it's not quite. Uh, so, well, I guess that begs the question: then, what happens if Adam leaves? What, what, what happens if Adam, in front of my last years, the old example? Yeah, um, I think it would. I would keep going, but um, like for, things like funding, which he's good at getting. And, and my next question, actually, yeah. where does the funding come from? <laughs> well, he, like, he'll go to San Francisco and he'll go and visit Mozilla. He goes and visits the Open Society Institute and Internet Archive, Google. All of those people, they, he gets a little bit of funding for some project and, and that book gets done. And like, like as a programmer, he gets, for me, he gets a bit of money from, and like we got some money from archive.org to make EPUBs work. So what I was doing changes to doing what the funding he's got is. So it's kind of like, it's like scribbling. he scrabbles around the internet, around the world, like he's flying the whole time, and um, finding money for, for making books and writing. Does that, does that mean that there's a corporate, there, there's, there's almost a corporate agenda there then? The books that are funded are the ones that get written. What, what happens, what, is there a kind of like a more organic way of getting, getting a book? Um, the, the, some of the books were written without a book sprint, especially the older ones, because before they kind of invented this process. And some of them have been, um, like, uh, I think it was a Blender book, was just recently updated anyway, in, a, in a, like a book sprint in Berlin, because you know, no one in Europe has real jobs and they just got to get together and do it. Um, um, and then there was like that one, was the convention tools one, um, that was funded by an NGO. So it does depend a bit on money for getting getting a sprint and getting that um, push behind it. But um, the older ones, I think, were mainly written by Adam, just in, you know, in his bedroom. Um, does that answer everything? Yeah, that, that does answer the question. Uh, 
I, well, no, it doesn't really, because I don't really know how, how, to what extent it's the community. Uh, <coughs> or not, but, uh, but Adam doesn't No, no. Yeah, yeah, this is what Or does it all come, is it all sort of generated? Definitely, and a lot comes up from underneath, obviously. The, the one I talked about, Charles, was the organic sprint. Mm -hmm. They did it in Boston as a book sprint. The, the one I talked about, Child one, yeah, they did it in Boston as a book sprint, but it was still pretty um, you know, community orientated. And I think the guys that write the activities keep updating it, particularly Walter. Yeah, so, I, um, saw, I saw his, his term, uh, what's it called? Total Art One. He still updates that as he writes new code for it. So it's, um, that's um, not being driven by a, you know, sorry, any sorry. external. <laughs> are they videoing this? <laughs> um, I, I guess the question I've got then is how much is collaborative in that kind of thing? If we're relying on someone like Walter to be updating his book and constantly maintaining it. How, how much is community driven? I mean, an another book, maybe uh, the, the Octiora book, which was written this summer in, um, in a book sprint in Berlin. Uh, we were like five people writing it initially uh, there, but there were uh, already then uh, four people um, that were participating from around the world. Then I think several people in this room have made minor changes or read through it and um, corrected it, um, and this is ongoing. If there are changes to the tools, this gets updated. So this is a way of, um, I think, the, commun the community-driven um, documentation of the tools um, for um, uh, creating Octura um, videos. And so th there was, I think there was um, fund, I mean, there was funding for the book sprint, and the, but this yeah. happened within another event. So the, the events um, provided a room and um, there was some t money spent on travel that people could come to this event. But beyond that, it was a commun uh, community initiative. It wasn't that yeah. people the did it because they got paid. Or so. Well, yeah, there, were, there are more books than there were, have ever been books prints. So some of them must have been just generated. Question is, uh, if you're reading actually one of these books or have downloaded or bought it, is there information about how you would contribute back if you're a user who has found a shortcoming? Yeah, the, um, in every book there tends to be an introduction which um, explains the process, how it came about, so you could look that up. Um, and there's always a credits page that you know, says who wrote it. So I presume these don't all actually have to be printed um, if it's a book that's live and still in development and continuing to be developed. Yeah, they're, they're printed um, on demand. So if you want a, a paper copy, you, you order it and it gets printed. Yeah. So some of them have been some of them have been printed in print runs, like the um, GNU command line manual got a few hundred printed. Um, there's the Free Software Foundation printed it under their auspices. Yep, yep. So it's like printing your budget there. Yeah. Just sort of run off, not as much. Yeah. Um, 
uh, any more questions? Well, who's next? <laughs>